for a Hunger Games cupcake and here it is. I made a Mockingjay pin cupcake using craft caramels, these individually wrapped caramels. What you do with these is put them in the microwave for three or four seconds, unwrap them and squish them together. And what you do is you get a ball of caramel that's moldable just like modeling clay. You can also use fondant to make this pin. And I suggest you look on YouTube. There are videos on YouTube of how to make this pin using fondant if that's what you have available. This photo I found on the internet and I printed it out to use as a reference and it's actually about the size that I want it to be to fit on the cupcake that I'm using. So once your caramel ball is molded all together, you're going to place it on a piece of waxed paper that'll help keep it from sticking to the countertop. So place the caramel ball between two sheets of wax paper or parchment paper and using a rolling pin just flatten it out until it is about one eighth of an inch in thickness. Then you need to cut out the circle shape for the ring of the pin. I'm using a biscuit cutter that was about the right size for the cupcake that I have. So once you cut it out, just peel away, gently peel away the unwanted piece and you're going to use that piece to make the rest of the Mockingjay. So there's the circle. Now, one thing with caramel, if you see fingerprints on it, if you rub it gently, it'll become shiny and the fingerprints will go away. Now, to get a ring, of course, you're going to have to cut out another circle in the middle. I'm using a lid to a spice container that was just the perfect size to make the, the right thickness of ring for the pin. It wasn't quite sharp enough to cut all the way through, so I'm just using the tip of a knife just to go around to detach that center circle from the ring and then gently prying it up and once again you save that piece of caramel to make the other parts of the bird. And there's the center ring. If there's any little pieces sticking out you can just kind of mold them back in. I'd say you'd probably need about two, two and a half, three caramels approximately for one pin. Now the body pieces, the first piece I decided to make was the upper wing or the right wing, the one that's at the top of the image. And all I'm doing is molding it to try to make it look like the picture. That's it. I've never made one of these before. This is the one and only one that I did. So I was kind of um, winging it, so to speak. And uh, I kind of looked at the image and decided which of the body parts for the bird were at the bottom and which ones were layered on the top. So to me, the first piece to put down was the upper wing. And then the second piece to put down would be the tail and the body. And the tail is uh, has two kind of very pointy bits, so I'm trying to make those. And the one thing with this caramel, if it doesn't, if you if the piece you're working on is not working out the way you want it to, you just have to mold it back into a ball, and then remold it into the piece that you want. So there's the body and the tail. And the next piece I'm making is the wing that's at the top of the bird, which would be the bottom wing, which I guess would be the left wing. So molding that into the right shape and just sticking it on. Just by gently pressing, it sticks together quite well. And then the next piece was the head of the bird. The bird has a quite of a kind of a very thin face and a very pointy beak. So that's what I'm adding on right there. I stuck it on and I didn't like it. I thought it was a little bit too big. And that's what's great about this is just you peel it off and just reform it into the shape that you want until you get something you like. So I finished putting the head on. Now what's missing is the little arrow piece. The arrow I made by just molding a little thin strip of caramel and then molding another piece for the arrowhead and for the feathers at the end of the arrow as well. Now to add a little bit more detail to this, I took a knife and I'm just going to add some little details by adding little lines to mark off where the feathers would be, just to give it a little bit more detail. Then 
take the whole thing, put it in the refrigerator for 20 to 30 minutes, and that's going to cause the caramel to harden up a little bit to make it a lot easier to work with. This is a chocolate cupcake with chocolate frosting, and you can see how stiff the caramel has become. Easy to work with, and just put it right on top of the cupcake. Now, this pin is probably just a little bit too big for this cupcake. Probably would make it a little tiny bit smaller next time. However, it fit on this cupcake, and I detached the arrow because I found that it was going to be way too long, so I ended up rethinking that and re remolding it to make it a little bit shorter so that it stayed on the cupcake. And there we go. There's the completed mocking J pin. Now they sell um, they sell gold luster dust. It's like a an edible glitter. You can buy that at craft stores and like Michaels or even at Walmart where they sell cake decorating supplies and you could brush some of that on top of the caramel just to give it more of a jewelry like appearance because it's supposed to be a pin. So there you go. What I would suggest if you're going to make a lot of these is set up an assembly line where you make if you're making 10 cupcakes do 10 upper wings, 10 lower wings, 10 heads, 10 rings, so on, so that they're all about the same size. And then assemble everything, refrigerate, and just before you're ready to serve these cupcakes, add the caramel on top, because although it'll be good for several hours just the way it is, the moisture from the frosting is likely to start to melt the caramels, or if you live in a very, very hot country, it may start to melt a little bit. So I probably would keep these refrigerated just until you're ready to serve them. So Mockingjay Cupcake, give it a try.